Hi everyone, my name is Claire Tomlin. I'm a professor of electrical engineering and computer sciences at Berkeley. And this is the 27th module in a series that we're recording for the course EECS 221A, Linear Systems Theory at Berkeley. Um, I'm just going to present one thing in this module, and that's the concept of a minimum polynomial of a matrix A. So we're always dealing with a, a matrix A. Let's suppose it's an n by n. So it's an n by n matrix. Let's suppose it's a real matrix. And um, we've already defined what the characteristic polynomial is of the matrix A. So we use this terminology, chi hat A of S is equal to the determinant of SI minus A. And we can write that out as um, S minus lambda 1, S minus lambda 2, up to S minus lambda n. So when the characteristic polynomial is set to 0, we typically call that the characteristic equation. And we can use that to, well, if we solve that equation for S, we, construct, we can get back the eigenvalues of the matrix A. OK, so this is the structure that we had before when we were assuming that the eigenvalues of the matrix A were all distinct. And we showed that in that case, the eigenvectors of the matrix A are all linearly independent from each other. Uh, suppose now you have repeated eigenvalues. OK, so um, let's actually write this out. So it may be that lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2, or there's some uh, number of repeated eigenvalues. So in general, I'm going to write uh, chi hat A of S to be equal to the following. I'll use the following terminology. So suppose we have sigma um, distinct eigenvalues up to S minus lambda sigma, where sigma is um, less than or equal to n. But if it's less than n, then some of these eigenvalues are going to appear with multiplicity greater than 1. And so we'll call those multiplicities d1, d2, d3, up to d sigma. Okay? So the di's are the multiplicities of the lambda i's, where um, we have that uh, d1 plus d2 plus d sigma is equal to n. Okay, because we always have n eigenvalues. It's just some of them may be repeated. Uh, Cayley-Hamilton, the Cayley-Hamilton theorem tells us that every matrix satisfies its own characteristic equation. So by Cayley-Hamilton, Cayley-Hamilton, we know that chi hat A of A is equal to the zero matrix. Um, Good. So we've got this polynomial, which we call the characteristic polynomial. Now let's define what we mean by the minimum polynomial. Minimum polynomial. And uh, we use chi for characteristic polynomial. We typically use psi for the minimum polynomial, chi hat A of S. So this is the polynomial, is the polynomial polynomial of least degree such that uh, chi hat A of A is equal to 0. So the point is that you could have a polynomial of lesser degree than n such that uh, we still get um, that evaluated at the matrix itself, it's equal to the zero matrix. Um, we know that the characteristic polynomial has degree n, but the minimum polynomial may have degree less than n. Um, OK, so very simple definition. The polynomial of least degree such that um, it's, uh, the matrix satisfies the minimum polynomial equation. With that definition, we can actually say a few things. We can say, first of all, so let's make a claim. We can say that the minimum polynomial divides the characteristic polynomial perfectly. OK, so it divides it without any remainder. And the proof is easy. Um, the proof is just, if not, so if it didn't divide it perfectly, then um, you would come up with a remainder. So let's write that out as follows. Uh, so chi hat A of S divided by psi hat A of S is going to be equal to some quotient term. We'll call that Q hat of S plus some remainder term. So R hat of S over psi hat A of S. 
okay? And uh, the degree of R has to be less than the degree of chi hat A, so it has to be less than N. Okay, but now you derive a contradiction because um, if you multiply out by psi hat A of S and then you evaluate that at um, A, so that would tell you that chi hat A of A is going to be equal to Q hat of A times psi hat A of A plus R hat A. Okay, now we know that has to be equal to zero by the Cayley-Hamilton theorem, but this is equal to zero by definition, and we've assumed that's not equal to zero. Okay, so that tells us that, um, well, I mean, this tells us that R hat A has to be equal to zero uh, by the fact that this is equal to zero, this is equal to zero, and then we derive a contradiction. Okay, so, so it tells us that it doesn't divide it perfectly. Okay, so we have that um, the minimum polynomial, as defined as follows, divides the characteristic polynomial perfectly. So we have a form of the characteristic polynomial. Since the minimum polynomial divides it perfectly, we can come up with a similar form for the minimum polynomial. We can say that by the fact that the minimum polynomial, or by our claim, which we've proven, that the minimum polynomial divides the characteristic polynomial perfectly, we can write out the characteristic, or sorry, the minimum polynomial as s minus lambda 1 to the m1, s minus lambda 2 to the m2, up to s minus lambda sigma to the m sigma, that's a sigma, where where these um, uh, m's, we have that um, m1 is less than or equal to d1, m2 is less than or equal to d2, up to m sigma is less than or equal to d sigma. Okay, so to divide it perfectly with this form of the characteristic polynomial, you're gonna need this form for the minimum polynomial. But these, um, the mi's don't have to add up to be n. They could add up to be something less than n. Um, okay, so what does this mean? So we can say a few things about this, but let's just do a couple of examples. So in general, if you're given a matrix A, um, we'd be interested in how do you find its minimum polynomial. So that, that's what we're going to talk about. But before we do that, or before, let, let's do that in a subsequent module, but we can just do some simple examples here. Suppose you had an A matrix. Let's make it, um, uh, let's make this A matrix diagonal. Lambda 1, lambda 2, or actually let's do lambda 1, lambda 1, lambda 2. So it's a diagonal matrix. Everything in the off diagonal is equal to zero. In this case, the um, characteristic polynomial, we can write that down by inspection, is just s minus lambda 1 squared, s minus lambda 2. The minimum polynomial is equal to s minus lambda 1, s minus lambda 1. Okay, so the minimum polynomial has um, degree two, whereas the characteristic polynomial has degree three. Uh, the second example I'm going to use is something similar, but it's not a diagonal matrix, but it's got the same eigenvalues. So everything is zero, except um, there's a one in the off diagonal element here, and then everything else is zero. So in this case, we have that um, chi hat A of S is equal to S minus lambda 1, S minus lambda 1 squared, S minus lambda 2. It's the same. But now the minimum polynomial is going to be S minus lambda 1 squared, S minus lambda 2. It's the same as the characteristic polynomial here. The basic rule, and we were, as we define Jordan forms in our next module, we'll see this, but the degree um, associated, so the multiplicity associated to an eigenvalue in the minimum polynomial is the size of 
the largest Jordan block associated to that eigenvalue. And so a Jordan block, here we have what we'll define in the next module. We have a Jordan block associated to lambda 1 of size 2 and a Jordan block associated to lambda 2 of size 1. Okay, so whereas the characteristic polynomial has the same degree as the matrix, the minimum polynomial, it contains all of the um, um, eigenvalue information. I just noticed a typo here. This should have been S minus lambda 2, according to that eigenvalue lambda 2. Um, but the multiplicity of that eigenvalue depends on the size of the largest Jordan block. And here, we had two Jordan blocks of size 1 associated to lambda 1 and one Jordan block of size 1 associated to lambda 2. Here we have one Jordan block of size 2 and one Jordan block of size 1. Okay, so we've defined the minimum polynomial. In the next module, we're going to move on and we're going to talk about the Jordan form based on our knowledge now of the, um, what the minimum polynomial is and these concepts of A invariance and direct sum. Thanks very much.